Hi folks, welcome back to this second video which will focus on step two of the accounting process which is recording those transactions that we analyzed for World Wide Webster and again to record them we're going to use the debit credit framework. So here was our little set of rules here. We know that using the debit credit framework it tells us that assets increase on the left-hand side and left means debit. Liabilities increase on the right, the right-hand side, and right means credit. Shareholders' equity accounts like contributed capital and retained earnings increase on the right and right means credit. Okay, so again, debit and credit only mean left and right. They don't mean increase and decrease. You can see that because we have an asset increasing and we debit it. We have a liability increasing and we credit it. So debit and credit can't mean increase or decrease. It just can't. It means left and right. So to demonstrate the left versus the right, we set up what we call a little T account looks like a T and the reason we set it up is because it has a left side and a right side and what's happening here is that when assets get bigger they get bigger on the left and left means debit alright so what would we know we would know if an asset gets smaller if it got bigger on the left it gets smaller on the right right and right means credit so decrease means the assets getting smaller and it gets smaller on the right and right means credit all right, liability, same thing. If we now know that liabilities increase on the right and right means credit, then where would a liability decrease? On the left-hand side, obviously, right? And left means debit. Shareholders' equity, same thing. If we had retained earnings go down or for whatever reason, we'll talk about that a little bit later, but any kind of shareholders' equity account that goes down, we know if it goes up, it goes up in the right and right means credit. If it goes down, it goes down on the left and left means debit. So that kind of helps you to see that all the debits and credits we process on the asset side have to be equal to all the debits and credits we process on the right-hand side. So we have this little scale here, right? That reminds us that whatever journal entries we do, however we record these transactions into our journal, the total dollar value of all the debits and credits processed have to be equal to keep the balance sheet in balance. So let's have a look at how we're going to do that. Well, let's go back to our first transaction that we analyzed. We said when we looked at this in our step one, we said that investors gave Shelley Webster of Webster's Worldwide Webster for her business ten thousand dollars in cash and we created contributed capital so what does that mean we have an asset going up when assets go up they go up on the left and left means debit we have shareholders equity going up shareholders equity goes up on the right and right means credit so if we go back to our document now assets go up on the left and left means debit shareholders equity specifically contributed capital goes up on the right and right means credit so there we are transaction a cash goes up on the left and left means debit and contributed capital goes up on the right and right means credit so again what we can see is the de debit the total debit and total credit amount in the transaction is equal so we have a transaction that's been entered into the journal that is in balance you'll notice here in the textbook does it as well they have plus a to make sure you know that cash is an asset and it's going up and contributed capital is also going up but it's a shareholders equity account right you can do this if you wish I have no problem with that you can decide whether or not you want to include it you'll notice sometimes in the classroom I don't because we've done it in the transaction analysis we've already determined that cash is an asset and it's going up so I don't always repeat it but if you want to you can do that in your journal entries it's okay now notice in our second entry we said that we borrowed fifteen thousand dollars from the bank and the bank gave us a note that note is a liability to us because it's due in two years in fact it's a long-term note but we don't need to know whether it's long-term or short-term to journalize it at this point all we know is that cash went up it goes up on the left and left means debit 
and we know in note payable it's a liability and a liability goes up or increases on the right and right means credit. So we're going to debit cash, credit note payable for 15000 And again, we can see the total dollar value of all the debits and the credits in this entry, journal entry, are, are, are equal. So we still have a balance sheet that's in balance. Now, we also know that we bought equipment and paid cash of 5000 And we said we had an asset equipment going up. We had cash and asset going down. They're both assets. We determined that in step one. But when an asset goes up, when an asset goes up, it goes up on the right, and right means debit. So we debit the equipment for five thousand. We also have an asset cash which is decreasing. It decreases on the right, and right means credit. So we're going to credit cash. And you can see again the total dollar value of all the debits and credits processed in this transaction are equal. So the accounting equation here would stay in balance. Now, we said we ordered supplies. You remember from the transaction analysis, but we didn't pay for them in cash. We bought them on credit. Well, supplies is an asset. The asset's going up. We're not paying yet. So we've incurred a liability. The liability is accounts payable. It's also going up. Accounts payable is a liability. It's going up. Assets, supplies, it's an asset. It's going up. We determine this in step one. What we're doing here is we're saying, well, if supplies are an asset, when assets go up, they go up on the left, and left means debit. When a liability goes up, up, it goes up on the right, and right means credit. So we're going to debit the supplies, the asset, and credit the liability, and we can see the total dollar value of the debits and credits processed in this transaction is equal. So we're confident that our balance sheet, after making this journal entry, will stay in balance. So we have a balanced position, right? The scale in balance. E, earlier we said there was no transaction here because all we did here was uh, get a contract for work that we're going to do later. So there's no transaction. We haven't done any work. We haven't received any money. It's a legitimate business transaction, but it requires no journal entry. What happens in F? In F, you'll remember, we paid down some of these accounts payable that we incurred here. We, we paid that whole amount down. How did we do it? We used up cash and we said cash was an asset and it's decreasing. We said liabilities are decreasing because we're paying them down. So we have a liability going down, right? That liability is accounts payable. So now we have to get it in the debit and credit framework. So what does that look like? Well, it says here that when an asset goes down, it decreases on the right and right means credit. So you'll notice here we're crediting our cash on the credit side by 300. But we've also got our accounts payable, which is a liability going down. Liabilities go down on the left, and left means debit. So we're going to debit the accounts payable. So we've got a debit and a credit that total up. So we have a balanced journal entry. Now, some of those supplies that we, bu that we bought weren't enough so now we see in G we gotta buy more supplies but now we're paying cash for them and if you go back to your step one transaction analysis what did we say we said supplies are an asset they're going up cash is an asset it's going down because we're paying cash so when we have assets going up they go up on the left and left means debit when assets decrease or go down, like cash, because we're paying for the supplies, the cash goes down on the right, and right means credit. So here we are. We've got a debit to supplies because supplies are going up, and we've got a credit to cash. So we can see the total dollar value of the debits and the credits processed in this transaction are equal, so our journal entry is balanced. That means we should come out with a balanced balance sheet equation here as well. Now, what happens in H? 
H said we bought equipment, but we only paid $200 of the $1,000 of it in cash, and the rest we put on account. So we got an asset, equipment, and it went up. We used up an asset to pay for it partially, and then the asset went down. That's cash. And we also said we didn't pay it all off, so now we've got a liability. We've got a debt, and that debt is going up, and it's called accounts payable. So now, how do we deal with the debit credit piece? Well, let's go back up here. We know we have an asset equipment. The equipment account is going up. It's increasing. It goes up on the left, and left means debit. So we're going to debit the equipment. What's happening to cash? Cash is an asset. It's decreasing or going down. It decreases on the right, and right means credit. So we've got the cash account going down by the amount we paid, which is 200 the last account we need to balance the journal entry is accounts payable. And we said accounts payable is a liability. We said this in step one. And the liability is getting bigger. It gets bigger on the right, and right means credit. So we're going to credit accounts payable for the difference, which is 800 the amount of that $1,000 that we haven't yet paid. So you can see the total dollar value of the debits and the credits we're entering, they're equal. So we have a transaction here when entered into the general journal should be balanced, okay? And produce a balanced balance sheet for us. And then in the last transaction, I, we saw what? We saw here that Shelley had ordered a server, okay? And it wasn't going to be delivered yet. Well, all she did was place an order. She didn't pay for it. All she did was place an order. She has nothing yet. So there's no transaction there. So this concludes step two of the accounting process, whereby we record transactions using the debit and credit framework. I hope you found the example helpful.